So you need another round of funding. This time you say, look, I went the VC direction. I, it's great, got money in, money. just to get to this level, but I want to try something different. Yep. Talk to me about crowdfunding, why you, why you chose to go that direction. Um, and another thing I think that people would want to know, and this is a question I asked, you and I have a, a, a friend named Deshaun who is the founder of Maven. And um, he, he told me something that shocked me. He said, you know, he, he's an MBA. And he said, Sean, all of the things that I learned in school, especially when writing my business plan, they, they wanted it super detailed. It was something like a book. He said, but when he went out to Silicon Valley and he started to, uh, he went through an accelerator pro, said his business plan was condensed down to about 10 pages. Exactly, and 10 slides, on. exactly. Go, so go ahead, take it from there. Exactly, no, it, it's just, I think that it's a different culture, right? And he's right, you go to school as an MBA, that's why it usually most MBAs are not good entrepreneurs because, well, Deshaun's an amazing entrepreneur because he's totally outside that model. But typically they're not because you're trained in this very strict way to do business. And then you go out to Silicon Valley and it's so disruptive and nothing like what you learn in business school. Most of these people are business school dropouts. They're proud to have dropped out of school to start a tech company. And so it's a very different culture and you have to get used to this, this type of culture. And like I said, some things were cool but something that I did not like, I do like the 10th page deck, even though you have to try to get as much as you can into that pitch, but the overall culture, I do think it was better for men in general. Not, you know, of course it's built for white men and black men could get a better foot in the door because they're men. And so people like Deshaun and Rodney and, and Dave Salvan, and like these are men that, you know, so many men that were able to break through these barriers of like raising significant rounds and, and it trickled down to the black women as well. You know, they definitely helped to pave the way for us. You know, he was one of the first black entrepreneurs to, to do what he's done at, at scale with his business. But I just want to try a different route. They do take a lot of your equity. They want a board seat. Um, you know, the culture I wasn't aligned with, but what I do know which is my history is going to my community, going to my network. That's how I built every business that I ever started from my people. The difference was once you reach a certain amount, a certain stage of business as a tech company, you're no longer legally allowed to raise money from friends and family unless they're accredited, which means they make $200,000 a year as an individual, 300,000 as an investor or a million net worth, which you have to prove. Okay, that excludes, that excludes a lot of our people. Most of them. That excludes 90% of our people, all yeah. right? right? Can, can, can you say those qualifications one more time to be considered an accredited investor? 200,000 income reported two years to the IRS as an individual, 300,000 reported two years as a couple or a million dollars documented net worth. So if my mother wanted to invest in me and she didn't meet those qualifications, I couldn't take it? Yeah. No. Whoa. Not, you can in your very first round, but once you reach a certain stage, once I raised that first million from VC, mm -hmm. nobody else could get in. I've, I've changed my company. I've changed the structure. I'm now a C corporation with institutional capital. I can no longer go back. It's no longer a little, you know, self-funded bootstrap business. It's now a corporation backed by institutional capital. So in order to sit at the table with them, you have to be at a certain income level. And that law was passed in 1933. And it had not changed since 2012 when the Obama administration changed it. But this is why we did not see a significant increase in black net worth. They always talk about this black net worth thing, throw it in our face. The reason why people are wealthy is because they have investments, which we were locked out of investments in early stage entrepreneurship, which again, you know, every time blacks started businesses, historically our parents and grandparents, they would burn them down. They would do things, they would gentrify the area. They put the freeways through the neighborhood, everything possible to, to stop us. And then inheritance, well, we couldn't own anything. So we weren't getting huge inheritances from our grandparents and our parents. Our generation, us and our kids will be the first real trust fund babies in our, that are black and real money handed down. It's happening right now. 
And so until that law was passed to allow everyone who are non-accredited to get into early deals, there was not an opportunity to invest in the types of things that could change entire families for generations. You understand what I mean? Somebody invested Uber for $5,000, Uber went public. That same $5,000 was 25 million on the day of IPO. That changes families forever. It does, yes it does. They don't give us those chances. I, I could have gave $5,000 for Uber. I'm sure you have five stacks that you could have gave to get 25 mil. Yep. They didn't, they didn't call us. They didn't say, hey, Sean, hey, Dom, you want to get in this Uber deal? That's a network of people. They don't put us at the table with them. So now it is, it's democratized. Now anybody can invest in an early stage company. And that's why it was important to me because my same supporters from Urban Star, from Flat Out of Hills, from D1 Consulting, they could now invest in Popcom. And they did, they mobilized like crazy. I have 5,000 investors now and I've raised $4 million in three from everyday people. Okay, I love that. You, you, how, many, how many different rounds of, of funding have you gone so, through? I'm on my third now. So I'm actually raising money now, I have to say this. I'm raising money now, startengine.com forward slash popcom. But I closed two before. I raised a million in 2019, I raised a million in 2020. And now, you know, we're at um, 800,000 on this one. So it's a million 70. And then we closed some angel money. So we raised over the past couple of years, 3 million. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. It's, from people. it's from the black people that don't invest. We are investing like crazy, actually. Oh, you, congratulations. And kicking the stock market's ass at the same time, which I love to see that happening right now. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.